Hello there and welcome to this video on the Day State Delta Wolf. In this one what we're going to be doing is removing and then refitting the shroud and chronograph assembly. The rifle that I'm going to be working on today is just a standard sub 12 Delta Wolf although this tutorial will also be applicable to the Alpha Wolves and the FAC rifles. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the magazine if one is installed in the rifle and then we're going to fire the rifle in a safe direction to make sure that there's no pellets in the barrel. So I've just done that very quickly off camera and we can tell that the rifle is now perfectly safe to work on. The next thing we're going to do is remove the barrel from the rifle. That's done by using a 3mm allen key in this back grub screw here. This one here. So remove the grub screw and then we can pull the barrel out from. There we have it there. I'll stick the body of the rifle over to one side where it's nice and safe. With the rifle put away in a nice safe position, we can get on to working on the shroud. The first thing we're going to do is remove the outer carbon sleeve, and that's done by loosening and removing these two grub screws in the back here, using a 2.5mm allen key. Once they're removed, we can quite simply slide the carbon shroud off, like so, exposing the chronograph. Now that we're at this stage, there's a few things we can actually do to the chronograph itself. If we needed to clean the clear windows in the side of the chronograph here, for example, if the chronograph stopped reading or something similar, you may just need to clean the inside of the shroud piece here. That's done by looking down the end of it and using something like a cleaning cloth or a pistol cleaning rod, getting in there and just gently wiping the sides of the clear plastic to remove any lead debris. Alternatively, by using a large flat bladed screwdriver, you can remove this brass nut and they state sell the clear plastic tubes as a separate replaceable part. I believe they're only £3 or something like that, so they're fairly cheap and inexpensive to replace if you needed to. I won't bother removing this one as it's a fairly simple job, however I will mention that there is an o-ring at the back of the tube and between the tube and the brass nut. So if you did take it out, just be aware of those things. Another thing I will mention while we're here is that this is one of the newer style chronographs with the aluminium housing on the end of the barrel. The older versions or the sub-12 versions were Delrin, although they are now being upgraded to do the aluminium ones. If we needed to remove the entire chronograph assembly, it'd be very easy to do so at this stage. What we'd need to do is locate these two grub screws in the back boss here and then using a two and a half mil allen key just gently remove them. Once the screws are loose what we can then do is unscrew the entire front section of this chronograph nice and carefully. Now I've already pre-loosened mine but these can come fairly tight from the factory so you may need to grip the barrel in a device with some nice soft jaws obviously to not mar the finish of the barrel and then crack it loose. However I've already pre-loosened mine to save a little time. Then whilst keeping the back boss in relation to the front part here gently unscrew it. And we can gently pull or slide the o-ring up the end of the barrel like so. Then we can slide the back boss off the barrel and stick the barrel to one side. Or if you were replacing the entire chronograph assembly, stick this to one side and reinstall it on the barrel. I'll cover the reinstallation of the chronograph onto the barrel very shortly. For now though, I'll just show you how to remove the circuit board or the chronograph itself from the chronograph housing. To do that, what we need to do is simply remove these five O-rings here the ones I just pointed to. First one can be slid off nice and easily. Second one, nice and carefully, using something nice and soft or non-conductive like a plastic o-ring pick. Gently tease the o-rings up and pull them off. Once all the o-rings are off, we can simply lift 
the circuit board of the chrome graph off the aluminium housing. So there we have it there. I will say there is a small plastic insulating piece on the bottom of the circuit board of the chronograph, so just be careful that doesn't get lost. And there we have the chronograph fully disassembled. As I said earlier, we still have the plastic tube in the inside of the chronograph housing. You can see through the windows there. My one's nice and clean, but obviously to clean it, fairly simple. Just use a pistol cleaning rod, a couple of cotton buds or something similar, or a nice piece of clean cloth. Just clean that and the chronograph should read again if it was dirty. Now that we have the whole shroud disassembled, we can now move on to the reassembly portion of this video. Before we do that though, I will just go over quickly the four O-ring sizes that are in the shroud. The ones on the inside of the chronograph housing, the ones either side of the plastic tube, are 10.5s by 1.5s MBR 70s. The three that secure the chronograph to the chronograph housing are BS016. The three large O-rings, this one here, this one on the front, and this one on the back of the shroud boss, are BS019 O-rings. And finally the two, these ones here, that secure the wire to the barrel to stop the wire flying around, are just 14 by one5 O-rings. With that out of the way, we can get on to the rebuild. The first thing we're going to do is just quickly install these two O-rings here over the wire. Next thing we're going to do is put the chronograph circuit board onto the chronograph housing. So first things first, we're going to make sure that we have our plastic insulating piece on the bottom of the chronograph. Next we're just going to flip it over and gently place it on top of the chronograph assembly like so. Obviously aligning it with the flap. Next we're going to put the three securing O-rings on. So putting them on nice and carefully. And then finally putting the last larger o-ring on that secures the wire in the back here. The final thing to do before we bring back the barrel is just carefully slide these two o-rings onto the aluminium shroud housing. That will just get them out of the way for when we bring back the barrel. With that done, we can bring the back the barrel and slide the back boss over the end of the barrel and fish the wires or the wires over the barrel itself. At this stage, we can then gently screw in the barrel to the aluminium shroud housing whilst allowing the back boss here to freely rotate, like so. At this stage, just make sure the wires are nice and tight to the barrel. You can tighten them up at any time by just rotating the back half of the shroud very gently, like so. And to stop the wires springing up, I'm just gonna fold this back O-ring back over and just hook it over roughly the middle of the wire there, like so. We're going to be leaving the back boss of the shroud loose on the barrel for the minute as we've got to realign it with the rifle itself. At this stage we'll get the body of the rifle back over at the bench and we'll realign the shroud with the rifle itself. So first thing to do is take our barrel and gently slide it back in the block, aligning the grub screw dimple on the side with the grub screw dimple in the side of the rifle. Pushing the barrel all the way home until we feel it stop. Next thing we can do is reinstall the securing grub screw in the side and then using a 3mm allen key we'll get that tightened up. Next thing we have to do is align the shroud back boss with the connection on the front of the rifle. So if we look at the front of the rifle there we see the connection in the front and we need to just gently slide the 
connection on the back of the shroud into it, like so. Next what we can do is use our securing grub screws to secure the back boss of the shroud onto the rifle. Now if you remove both sets of grub screws that were in the shroud, the shorter ones go in the top here and the longer ones go in the bottom. Before you do them up tight, just make sure that the back boss isn't hard against the front of the rifle. There wants to be just a tiny little bit of gap so that the actual shroud itself isn't hard up against the front of the rifle. But once we're happy with the position, we can get the grub screws installed and then tightened up nicely with a two and a half mil Allen key, like so. And then lastly, we can bring back the carbon fiber shroud. So I'll slide that over, like so, being nice and careful not to get any wires pinched. Just taking a good look over it before we push it home to make sure that we've got no wires trapped between the carbon fiber tube and the back boss of the shroud. There we have it there like so. The last thing we can do is reinstall the two grub screws in either side of the shroud to secure the carbon fiber tube. And again, that's done using a two and a half mil Allen key. And there we have it. That's the rifle fully built back up. The last thing we can do is just test the rifle and make sure the chronograph on the side is still working. So I'll get that done off camera quickly. I've just done a few shots into the backstop and as you can see there the chronograph's reading. So I'm happy that the chronograph's reinstalled and that the rifle is ready to shoot. So I hope this has been useful and thank you for watching.